Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. Moving closer to accountability in Uvalde. DPS now making a move more than seven months after the shooting at Robb Elementary and that controversial response. And a local middle school coach collapses and dies. It's a tragedy that's been compounded after we, what we saw during Monday night's football game. We're going to take you to Divine to share Coach Sanchez's story coming up. But first, we got to go to Washington. The chaos on Capitol Hill continuing into day four. Right now, lawmakers in the House are taking their 14th vote. But Congress still doesn't have a speaker, which is putting the legislature on hold. Yeah, Republican Kevin McCarthy moving closer to gaining support from conservatives tonight, but he has not been able to grab the speaker's gavel just yet. We're monitoring what tonight's last minute negotiations will mean for this vote. Again, it's happening right now. We'll continue to update you the, and give you the results as soon as this vote is final. And now to a story that's been on the minds of many. We've been hearing more about heart health since Monday night when Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin went into cardiac arrest and collapsed during the Bills Bengals game. Now we should say that he is recovering tonight. He just had his breathing tube, tube removed, but a young coach from Divine wasn't so lucky. Yesterday he collapsed in front of his class and passed away. Tonight, the night team's Patty Santos shows us how his students and athletes are honoring him. I didn't know he was behind me with a water balloon. This playful video of Coach Jacob Sanchez soaking principal Candy Darnell. An example of his joyful personality that made him a favorite among students and colleagues. That was Jacob. He was playful. Darnell has known Sanchez since he was a young student. She was with him minutes before Sanchez collapsed in front of his sixth grade class Thursday at Divine Middle School. He seemed fine. I mean, everything seemed fine. Staff members automatically started CPR, but it was too late. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office tells us he died of a heart attack. He was 35. He'd been a teacher for seven years. He was a kid's teacher, I'll put it that way. Uh, he took time out um, to connect with the kids. Friday, the community gathered for a vigil before the start of school. We invited the high school kids because he did have an impact on a lot of our high school kids and they were having a tough time. Throughout the day, students and colleagues left notes of love and appreciation for him outside the gym doors and walls. Students found their own ways to mourn. Nearly 80 were out of school today. Come Monday, Darnell says the school family and community will try to embrace students with prayers and compassion. We never know when it's our time and you need to tell the people you love that you love them. And tonight, the family issued a statement. His wife saying they shared a beautiful life together. His twin brother, David, saying, quote, our brother loved his family, friends, and his students especially. He was the kind of man you would strive to be, end quote. And Sanchez leaves behind a child, the community already gathering donations to support her. Steve, Stephania. Just 35 years old. Quite a loss. Thank you, Patty. The Texas Department of Public Safety is preparing to fire another officer, it seems, over the botched response at Robb Elementary. CNN reporting tonight that DPS is moving to terminate Christopher Kind Kindle. The Texas Ranger is among seven DPS officers suspended after the shooting. We actually first told you about Kindle back in October. He reportedly told investigators he arrived at the school around noon on May 24th and gave his bosses updates. He was not involved in discussions about breaching the classroom, though. According to CNN, Kendall notified today of DPS's intention to fire him. The process gives him several days to respond to DPS. If he is terminated, Kendall would be the second DPS officer fired in connection with that shooting. Got some breaking news right now. The search is on for a suspect who stabbed a passenger in a car. It ended at this gas station near North New Braunfels Avenue and I-35. Police say four people in that car. Two of them started arguing. One passenger stabbed another in the chest. Officers say the victim was dropped off at this gas station. He was pronounced dead on the scene. The suspect managed to run away. The driver is speaking with police right now. And new on the night, police now sorting through a series of stories in a deadly shooting. This one happening at an apartment complex on Medical Drive near the Medical Center. Police say one man was killed, another rushed to the hospital. Officers say both the victims were in the same car. They don't know what led up to that shooting since they say they've received several stories from the survivor. Right now, officers think a robbery may have led to tonight's shooting, but the investigation 
is still in its very preliminary stages. And I hear investigators are trying to learn more about a man that was found dead on the side of a road. 25-year-old Lucio Carmona was found just outside of Pleasanton on Tuesday. And tonight, investigators say they have two suspects in the case, and they're from San Antonio. So we'll start with David Castleberry and Clarissa Guillen. They're both facing murder charges. Atascosa County deputies linked them to Carmona's body. They say the two suspects admitted to killing Carmona during a robbery. Deputies say that charges could be increased to capital murder in this case. Right now, some road closures already beginning tonight. It's going to continue throughout the weekend. This is near Gold Canyon and Loop 1604 on the city's north side. Crews began closing roads about an hour ago to begin some work on some bridge repairs in the area. Let's take a look at the map of this area, what we're talking about. TxDOT says they're going to close Loop 1604 at Gold Canyon in both directions starting tonight. Ramps connecting 281 to Loop 1604 East will also be closed. Those closures expected to last until 5 a.m. Monday. Now another road project getting attention from San Antonio City Council. People are frustrated, they're fed up, and they are fighting for road work to finish along the St. Mary Strip. We've told you about this. Well, tonight, City Councilman Mario Bravo acknowledged concerns that construction was cutting into profits for businesses in that area. He says with the help of Mayor Ron Nuremberg, local businesses could get $2.2 million. However, businesses say that they just can't wait that much longer for help. The night team's John Paul Barajas was at tonight's meeting where home and business owners spoke about what worried them. You guys to get it together. I want you to act like you have some professional pride in doing your job. Business owners and residents are at a breaking point over a project that broke ground in 2021. We want to stay in business. We've been here 22 years. I'm not going to let construction take us out. Construction on the St. Mary Strip was supposed to be finished in late 2022. Now they're hoping to have the road finished by March, followed by sidewalks, landscaping, and lighting this summer. Y'all are killing us. I mean, first you took our parking, then you took the road, then you took out the side streets. Project contractors, spa glass, and public works officials say delays are due to weather. The month of November was a very wet month. Unforeseen challenges with utilities and soil. You guys really didn't understand what was going on in under the surface based on the plans drawn by the system. And a mistake by another contractor no longer on the project. It was a mistake. There's about 200 liter of sewer pipe that was installed there on the elevation yesterday. Chad Carey, president of North St. Mary's Business Association, says he wants accountability. They're making excuses and Public Works in the city of San Antonio is letting them get away with it. Director of Public Works, Rising Husini, tells us accountability is a priority. Whenever they miss that agree deadline, we will charge them $1,300 LD or liquid damage per day. The next deadline is one week out. Road work along St. Mary's between East Woodlawn and Valdez Place is scheduled to wrap up by Friday, January 13th. Now, Kerry tells us he understands why customers stop coming to the St. Mary's Strip, but he hopes that they'll come back to support the businesses that drastically and desperately need it. Now, as mentioned in the intro to this story, next week, City Council will discuss financial aid for the businesses. Now, Assistant City Manager Rod Sanchez also sent us a statement that reads in part, We heard every concern the city is committed to delivering the projects that the community needs. So, again, we'll see what happens next week. On the St. Mary's Strip, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Could it be too little too late, though? Thank you, John Paul. Now for a look at some of today's big headlines in your Nightbeat News Flash. Today marks two years since the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. There's a moment of silence held on the Capitol steps today to remember those who were lost. Today, the Capitol, silent and solemn. A remembrance for the five people who were killed, including Capitol Officer Brian Sicknick, who lost his life defending a barrier outside the Capitol. 140 officers also seriously injured that day. Southwest Airlines taking a multi-million dollar hit after that massive meltdown over the holidays. The airline says that mess cost them at least $725 million. They could lose even more money. In a financial filing today, the airline said this will cause the company to report a loss in its fourth quarter. At least $400 million is due to revenue loss. Other costs include reimbursements, extra employee hours, and the goodwill offering, that's what they call it, of frequent flyer benefits to travelers. A momentous occasion in Military City, USA, Joint Base San Antonio Fort Sam Houston, Army North, celebrating 80 years. The celebration of the 5th Army featured its own 323rd Army Band and demonstrations of military uniforms from different time periods. 
Throughout its birthday week, the command hosted a series of events for soldiers, family members, civilians on and around base. The celebration centering around its history and involvement in World War II. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Humidity is rising tonight as the temperature falls, and that's going to lead to some areas of fog for tomorrow morning. So early risers anticipate a mild morning, 62 degrees around sunrise around San Antonio, some mid to upper 50s in the hill country, but it's going to be sticky, foggy, and drizzly as well. So a damp start to our weekend. Then some real rain is likely to develop. I'm going to time that out for you and talk about the cold front as well in just a bit. Adam, thank you. And still ahead on the night, beat a drug lord's son arrested, but a judge in Mexico now stepping in. The new legal move as President Biden prepares for his trip to Mexico coming up. Plus, promising news in the fight against Alzheimer's, the potential benefits and hope that a new FDA-approved drug could just give patients. We're also going to check back on that vote for the next Speaker of the House on Capitol Hill. It's all next right here on the Night Beat. All right, so right now we're going to go back to Capitol Hill. As we said, we would update you on the situation there. So could this be it? This was uh, the 14th time that uh, House members are voting on their speaker, and we're being told that so far Kevin McCarthy has received 216 votes. He just needs one more to make it official. We'll see if it'll happen. Yeah, voting is still underway. Congress still without a House speaker, which is putting the legislation on hold. Again, Kevin McCarthy is just one vote away from finally claiming the speakership he's worked so hard for. We're monitoring what tonight's last minute negotiations are going to mean for tonight's vote. And we'll, of course, continue to update you as the results of this vote come in. In other news tonight, hope for Alzheimer's patients and their families. The Food and Drug Administration approved a drug that appears to slow cognitive decline in patients. The companies that make the drug say an 18-month clinical trial showed that it slowed that decline by 27%. However, the treatment also came with risks like bleeding and brain swelling. We do know that lecanemab has a low rate of causing macro hemorrhage, not necessarily fatal, but a low rate, less than 1%. So the FDA is saying the drug, of course, would carry a warning about those risks so that people know. The dementia treatment is administered through an IV every two weeks. Experts say the drug seems to reduce plaque in the brain of a person with Alzheimer's disease. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, new developments following that arrest of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's son, a federal judge in Mexico, stopping the extradition to the United States. Abadeo Guzman is allegedly a cartel leader himself. His arrest yesterday in western Mexico led to chaos, including 29 deaths, according to CNN. A judge halted the younger Guzman's extradition today. He also suspended a measure that will now allow Guzman to speak with his relatives and his legal team. The arrest in Mexico comes just days before President Joe Biden is set to visit the border city of El Paso and then go on to visit Mexico City. Count on KSAT to bring you live coverage from the border during all of this. Our John Paul Barajas and photojournalist Adam Barasa will be heading to El Paso tomorrow. You can expect a live report tomorrow on the night beat. We're also going to be there on Sunday during the president's visit. All right, now we're going to take things outside here. A live cam along I-10. Things flowing very smoothly. 66 degrees out there right now. And let's just talk about the weekend, Adam. Yeah, the weekend's upon us, and it's going to start off a little on the damp side. Early risers tomorrow, you're going to have the fog and drizzle to contend with, and then some real rain. Let's take a look at our rain chances. And you'll see that 40% during the day tomorrow. That's mainly just... The, to account for the drizzle and some sprinkles, but then 40 to maybe even 60% by tomorrow night after sunset, some real rain, some showers and thunderstorms where you could actually have some meaningful accumulations. Let's talk about it here. Big picture, big swirl again in the West Coast is another atmospheric river coming on shore. It's actually the last thing they need after the previous atmospheric river. I was looking at uh, snowfall accumulations in the Sierras over 100 inches out near Mammoth. <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, we, we're looking at this little upper level swirl. It, it developed a surface low pressure system and a very weak cold front that's now moving into West Texas. And that cold front's going to get here by tomorrow evening, helping to trigger some of those scattered showers and storms. Before that time, we're talking fog. Notice midnight, some reduced visibility. We go through the night, 
fog thickens, becomes more dense, and we do anticipate visibility is a mile, maybe even less tomorrow morning. This is 8 a.m. Future cast saying about half mile in Bernie and about one mile at International Airport in town. And then those uh, ceilings, the cloud bases should start to lift a little bit by 10 a.m. and we'll have some better visibility and not as much dampness and you know, some of the roads and trails should really start to dry out then. This is our future cast at noon, still cloudy. I mean, if we're lucky, we'll see a glimpse of the sun around midday. But notice as we get into the late afternoon, and especially evening, some sprinkles here and there, yeah. but it's after sunset that the cold front slowly drops in and prolongs its potential to develop some showers and storms. 11 p.m. scattered to widespread, especially east of I-35, but even in and around San Antonio and immediate surrounding communities and uh, counties surrounding Bear, you could still get in on some of that action after sunset tomorrow, then especially pushing eastward through tomorrow night and even early on Sunday morning. But I think after sunrise on Sunday, it's all gonna be over with and the sky will clear. All right, temperature 67, dew point 60. They're gonna meet in the lower 60s tonight. That means the air is saturated and that'll help lead to the fog and dampness tomorrow. But notice what happens when that weak cold front moves through. So dew points tomorrow into the 60s, muggy, sticky outside. But behind the cold front by Sunday morning, it's back to that refreshing, crisp, you know, kind of winter-like feel out there in terms of the lack of humidity. Details for tomorrow, 62 at 7 a.m. By noon, we're at 68. Again, those cloud bases lifting a bit by 10 a.m. And then just some sprinkles here and there tomorrow afternoon. It's tomorrow evening after 5, 6 p.m. when some of those scattered showers and storms should develop. And then on Sunday, becoming sunny, noticeably less humid, and a high of 67. So Sunday, really the best day to be getting outside and taking down the Christmas decorations and all the lights. Notice next week, it's back to what we've been experiencing, a good amount of sunshine, mornings mostly in the 40s and afternoons generally in the 70s. All right, Adam, thank you. So now we're going to go back to that voting at the U.S. House. The 14th time, apparently not a charm for Republican Kevin McCarthy. He is still not the House Speaker. We still don't have a House Speaker. He came one vote just one. shy, yep. just one. And now they're not going to vote again until Monday. They have recessed the House until Monday. So we are still without a House Speaker in the House of Representatives tonight. And by the way, this is now the longest speaker contest that we've had in 164 years. There you go. All right, Spurs back in action tonight at home. Yeah, they'd already lost Devin Vassell, remember, to the arthroscopic procedure he's going to have next week, and Pop doesn't expect him back for at least till after the All-Star break. But they also lost Keldon Johnson, yet they still found a way to win against Detroit. We'll show you how they did it. And what about going back home in the Dome? For some, it's their first ever trip. <laughs> Good little history lesson today as well. Back home tonight after a quick road trip to New York in their Fiesta themed uniforms, ready to take on the Pistons. Jeremy Sohan with a nice little turnaround jumper that bounces off the rim, but Romeo Langford is there to slam it down. Keldon Johnson off the screen gets it into the lane for the bucket and an eight point Spurs lead. But Sadiq Bay for the three at the buzzer. He helped cut the Spurs lead down to three after one. Trey Jones lobs it up for Sohan for the alley oop and a three point lead. Then Jones comes up with a seal. He's going to take it back for the bucket. Spurs lead 51 48 at intermission. To start the second half, we got word that Keldon Johnson. Johnson strained his left hamstring right here in the first half. He would lead the game, would not return. Spurs on the attack. Malachi Branham pushing the pace. He kicks it out to Josh Richardson for the three. That caps off a 10-0 run. 87-76 Spurs going into the four. Spurs now playing team ball. Jones to Jakob Perto, cutting Branham for the dunk. Spurs by a dozen. Jones led the Spurs tonight, going strong to the hoop. He puts it up and in for two of his 25 points. 11 Spurs saw playing time. All 11 scored. Spurs snapped a three-game skid, 121-109. to Pulled off a big win for us um, to start the new year. After you know our trip to New York, um, I felt like you know, Romeo stepped up big for us tonight, um, for sure. Stanley came and hit big shots. Malachi down the stretch hit a big shot. Jakob was a beast all night. So I feel like it was a full group effort tonight um, with you know our top two scorers out. 
Yeah, and uh, hopefully that carries over into tomorrow without the top two scores as well. 5 p.m. tip time tomorrow at the AT&T Center. Spurs are reporting to us that 57,218 tickets have been sold to their 50th anniversary game in the Alamo Dome one week from tonight against the Golden City Warriors. That means they're only 5,000 short of the record 62,046 set back in March of 1998 in the Georgia Dome when the Atlanta Hawks hosted uh, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. And they're 8,000 short of the full capacity of 65,000 in the Final Four configuration. We sat down with Spurs rookie Jeremy Sohan tonight and we'll have that interview the entire one for you this Sunday heading into this milestone event but look at his reaction we showed him the water cannon incident in the season opener back in 1994. No way. Look at that. First let's show you what happened to the Alamo Dome No way. When the water system was kicked off by the fireworks. Oh snap. Yep. Yep. That's like powerful too. Yes. 12,000 gallons a minute is being pumped onto that court right. before that game against Someone's got an umbrella inside and the, the fans still stayed? Everybody stayed. They were a little wet. No. And by the way, the water smelled terrible. It smelled like no. Oh, milk. no. <laughs> by the way, Jeremy told us tonight he's never even been in the Alamo Dome and the largest crowd he ever played in front of, maybe 25,000. You can see the entire interview this Sunday night on Instant Replay. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys have a chance to either be in first, second, or fifth seed in the NFC playoff race. They need to win and have a combination of the Eagles and the 49ers lose to grab the first or second seed. So is the team's focus to win the division or just go into the playoffs playing well? We've got to win. That, the, the focus first, first and foremost is win, uh, play well, yes, and build momentum. And if we win the division title, that's, that's not necessarily up to us at this point. We've just got to go win and take care of our business. But, yeah, that would be great. I mean, you don't play the game checking up every quarter to see what that other score is. You've got to play and, as I always say, be where your feet are. Clean up things from last week and be better this week to make sure that we're hitting this, this thing full stride. Yeah, and they play all at the same time on Sunday. They take on the Commanders at 325 in Washington. High school basketball in full swing. Next. Some great District 27 Friday matchups in boys high school basketball tonight. Sam Houston taking on Jefferson Alamo Convocation Center. Hurricanes take the lead midway through the second quarter off the miss. Jalen Jackson is there for the rebound and the putback. 23-22 Sam Houston, but the Mustangs answer right back. Nico Vela finds Jeremiah Torres, who drains a three from the wing. Jefferson back up by two, then check out the full court pass. Vela to Trey Perez for the layup in transition. Jefferson leads 29-27 at the half, but the Hurricanes rallying win it. 55-53 District 28-58 tonight. Southwest Legacy hosting South Sand. Titans strike first. David Johnson finds Emilia via Pando, who slices to the basket for the lay-in and a quick 2-0 lead. Bobcats return. Fire. Ruben Hernandez drains a triple to put South Sand up by one. Then check out the ball movement here. Hernandez to Illusion Saldana to Christian Aldana, who nails a jumper. South Sand knocks out the Titans 43-41. Just up the road, same district. Southwest hosting McCollum. Late second quarter, Cowboys in the move. Ryan Soteo with a nice bounce pass to Maris Cassell for the floater. McCollum leads 31-28. Here comes Southwest. Final seconds of the half. Janai Bermundez pulls up for the long range and beats the buzzer with a three. That ties it up at 31 all at the break. The Dragons use that momentum early in the third. Tremont Martin knocks down a corner triple, capping a 7-0 run. Southwest hangs on to win it 57-55. Girls hoops tonight over Lanier, District 27, 5A. Jefferson taking on Sammy Houston, a battle of 7-0 teams. Mustangs open things up in the third quarter. Uh, Myers Cuellar hits a three from the wing to put Jeff up 24-21. Hurricanes trying to answer. Kelajaya Henderson weaves her way to the basket for the layup to make it a one-point game. But Jefferson pulls away thanks to Cuellar. First, she knocks down another three for a 27-23 lead. Then Madison Guzman finds Cuellar for the lay-in to beat the third quarter buzzer. Jefferson goes to 8-0. They win it 41-34. Great to see all these teams having hard-fought games. Looking forward to the Jeremy Sohan interview on Sunday. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. It should be fun. Thanks, Greg. And we'll be right back after this. Numbers now in for tonight's Mega Millions jackpot. The prize estimated $940 million, the sixth largest jackpot in history. 3, 20, 46, 59, 63. The Mega Ball is 13. Good luck. Yeah, big time. Yeah. See that cold front in West Texas that's headed our way. Notice also not a very sharp temperature drop behind it. It'll really just help trigger some scattered showers and thunderstorms tomorrow evening. Even around this time and thereafter we'll have some of that action. About 40% coverage across our area, especially along and east of I-35, then clearing out and less humid Sunday. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome weekend. Good night.